Hello there guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again for another edition of Let's Talk Chelsea. Hope you're all doing well and keeping safe today. Going to be talking about the inside story behind Kai Havertz's transfer to Chelsea from a brilliant piece in The Athletic. But before we get into any of that, I want to ask you guys, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you never miss an upload. Also, hit that like button if you're enjoying the content because it helps out the channel as well. As you probably know, it's got a new mug in the studio with the new logo, the new banner for the channel, a refresh for the new 2020-21 season. Got some really exciting content coming up this week as we build up to that first game away to Brighton in the Premier League. Um, we've got some exciting collabs, big prediction videos, not only a prediction video for Chelsea season in particular, but also Premier League. I'm going to predict all 20 Premier League teams uh, this season. So please stay tuned for that. Make sure you don't miss any of that content coming up this week. Let's get into this article from The Athletic. Really enlightening. Of course, there's been so much reaction coming out about this massive deal. Kai Havertz officially becoming a Chelsea player. Basically, Chelsea haven't stopped tweeting about Kai Havertz. I'm not complaining, no. We saw his first training session uh, yesterday. Just want to quickly touch on that before we get into the article. Really exciting to see Kai Havertz um, at Cobham training. The interesting thing to me was Frank Lampard was watching on as well as Jody Morris, of course, all the players out on international duty at the moment. I think as we get close to that Brighton game, hopefully we'll get some insight in how fit Kai Havertz is because a lack of pre-season. I think that's a concern going into the opening weeks of the season for me with a lot of players. The amount of players we brought into the team this summer um, and sort of seeing how they're all going to gel, it, it may take a little longer. And will Kai Havertz be starting that game? I wouldn't be stunned if he's on the bench to start that game against Brighton, but we'll have to wait and see. But it was great to see him at Cobham, first training session as a Chelsea player officially. But this piece, I definitely suggest in The Athletic, please go and read it in its full context. Can be taking some points out of it that I found interesting, but please go and read it. Uh, link in the description box below. How Chelsea signed Kai Havertz, years of planning and Lampard's gutsy call. This is from Simon Johnson, Liam Toomey and Raphael Honingstein. The first thing for me that I learned from this article is Chelsea being interested in Kai Havertz for a long time, um, not just the past few months, which is the way it's felt for us fans seeing Chelsea linked to Kai Havertz about April time and they're getting more serious as the months progressed and now of course he's a Chelsea player but apparently Chelsea have been scouting Kai Havertz pretty much since last year 2018-2019 season even before Frank Lampard became manager. The head of international scouting Scott McLaughlin who is a man of great influence apparently at the club according to Simon Johnson championed the youngster to the hierarchy from a very early stage and Chelsea apparently were already planning a big spend following the transfer ban and the extensive scouting of Kai Kai Havertz was a big part of that. They were planning to sign Kai Havertz or go in for him seriously this year. So even before Frank Lampard had come into the club, even before you know the transfer ban was overturned, Chelsea knew they wanted to spend big on the first team squad this summer. So it's gone back quite a way. And even referring to Timo Werner scouting that Chelsea done, apparently Havertz was much more extensive than that. Um, and then you're sort of looking at, for me, the COVID impact that the article goes into um, that has impacted this transfer once again. And it's in a, it's weird to say with a pandemic because, you know, I don't want to sound tasteless or anything. It's just it's in a weird way this transfer market has operated. And the fact that Chelsea had that transfer ban, had a lot of funds because that summer 2019 transfer window, we sold Edin Hazard for a lot of money. We got 60 million for Alvaro Morata, other players as well. And that really helped Chelsea financially to boost the funds for this transfer market. But COVID being a big factor in clubs not wanting to spend a lot of money like Bayern Munich or Real Madrid this summer. I also think it was relevant to Liverpool back Backing out of the Timo Werner deal as well. Uh, ben Chirwell, Leicester wanting about 80 million apparently originally for Ben Chirwell. Chelsea getting that down to about 40 to 50 million. It wasn't only COVID, it was of course Leicester not getting the Champions League qualification at the end of the 1920 Premier League season. There were other factors as well, but it did help Chelsea get their first choice targets. But something Simon Johnson stresses is. Havertz didn't settle for Chelsea just because Bayern or Real weren't in for his signature this summer. Seriously, and Chelsea were the only club willing to go out there and spend the big money to bring Kai Havertz to Stamford Bridge. Havertz wanted to join Chelsea, and a lot of that was down to one man, Frank Lampard. We've heard so much about this with a number of players. I've picked up on it. A massive part of Chelsea's transfer success recently is Lampard's influence on players convincing them to join the club. Apparently, Lampard laid out his vision of attacking football with young players at the fore. Lampard explained how he was in the process 
process of building a new team and Havertz was going to be one of the linchpins. There was a feeling of freshness, a club with growing momentum, something Havertz wanted to be a part of. Indeed, he was full of excitement as the conversation came to an end. He was convinced Chelsea were going to be a lot of fun. And that's the thing for me, Havertz having a chance to be part of something fresh at Chelsea Football Club under Frank Lampard, a team that's still moulding into something new, a team that's on an upwards curve, hopefully, that's going to get better over a number of years. And I want to make a comparison to the team of Werner transfer because a lot of talk around Werner going to Liverpool which would be an exciting move Jurgen Klopp apparently really wants to play that face-to-face contact with Timo Werner laying out his plans like Frank Lampard has with players but when reading about sort of Timo Werner and sort of the interest in Liverpool and sort of the plans Klopp had it was almost like Werner's going to come into a settled Liverpool team that's of course now won the Premier League and he's going to have to wait like six months to get into the first team and I just think for a player of Timo Werner's quality and pedigree at this point and class I just think that's a little bit arrogant and I think that probably was a negative factor maybe in that transfer and, and Timo Werner maybe thinking oh, he could have stayed with Leipzig for a little longer and then eventually go to Liverpool and Frank convincing Timo Werner he wasn't just going to be a bit pot player he didn't have to wait six months to get into the first team he's probably going to be a big player like Kai Havertz will be for his plans this season and I think it's one of those things that Liverpool I think are finding difficult at the moment convincing players probably to join their project because they're at the top of the mountain they've won the Premier League they've won the Champions League they're the best team in England currently and it's about having that settled side I think Chelsea have struggled with this in the past when we've won Premier League titles it's how do you improve a team that's really good I think that's a struggle and with Chelsea convincing players like Havertz, like Werner, like Ziyech, like Chilwell. And also I thought another big point was Chelsea coming across as an enticing adventure for Kai Havertz's career. The fact that going to say a, a Bayern Munich or a Real Madrid and winning say a La Liga or a Bundesliga isn't as impressive as winning a Premier League title, which of course is so difficult now with the state of competition in the Premier League. Um, I think that's a big thing. You're seeing a lot of big players now coming over to the Premier League. The Liga having problems, not having the big stars going over there anymore. And I think it's positive for the Premier League, positive for Chelsea. Over, I think this is a really interesting article, really gives you a lot of detail, extended detail on Chelsea's transfer strategy. And it's really positive and really exciting. For me, the big thing that was a concern last year, I think when Sarri was still manager, sort of how unified were Chelsea behind the scenes in terms of transfer strategy, in terms of what the style of play was going to be on the pitch, you know, how close was the manager to transfer dealings, you know, convincing players to join a project. Was there a project? Was there actually a vision? I mean, a lot of clubs say there's a vision, but it seems now not only with Frank Lampard, but someone I haven't mentioned in today's video, Petr Cech, being sort of that middleman between the Chelsea hierarchy and Frank Lampard. We'd heard Petr Cech had a big influence on the Timo Werner deal. And this is a massive deal for Chelsea. It's the biggest of the summer, even if it's not the most expensive player in Chelsea's history. One thing they did point out, of course, Edin Hazard comparisons when he joined the club. This does seem like the biggest statement Chelsea have made in transfers since Edin Hazard joined in 2012, getting the most coveted youngster in European football. But that is it for this edition of Let's Talk Chelsea. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch it. If you did enjoy it, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Follow me on Twitter at Son of Chelsea. Have a great day. And I'll see you again. <laughs>